We're here in this great facility that represents history, the Il del Alfonso, Mexico City. The overall premise of what we had hoped to do here was an integration of engineering and architecture and art. I studied engineering, but I've also always been interested in art, architecture, and creativity. Um, and so I knew SOM was a place that would allow me to wear both hats. I also never expected to be standing in front of an art piece made by machine learning. We turned to machine learning because uh, we've been seeing it with self-driving cars and other industries that are starting to adopt this newer technology. And so we started doing tests with the photos we had from the Mexico reconnaissance trip. As soon as we heard that there was a significant event here in Mexico City, I called my trusted colleague Neville Mathias, who in fact was one of two engineers that came to Mexico City in 1985. And I said to Neville, I said, well, what do you think about uh, SOM's effort to be there on the ground, as we did years ago, and, um, and help with the reconnaissance? And he said, absolutely. We arrived a day after it occurred, uh, after the earthquake, and there was still a lot of rescue missions that were underway. Um, and so we were very sensitive to those efforts. Uh, and we spent three, four days together walking around the city, assessing the damage, and helping out the local efforts. You know, one of the, the main goals was to share our findings with the earthquake engineering community. We took hundreds of photos, having to go through uploading all those photos to the Earthquake Engineering Research Institute, EERI. They have um, a database where you can teams can upload their photos and specify you know, different aspects of your findings in each photo. What type of damage did you see? What was it structural, non-structural? What, what was the severity level of that damage? And going through that process manually can take a long time. And so we, we came away from that experience thinking, how can we improve this whole effort? That's where we started thinking about incorporating technology into the process to automate it, make it faster and more efficient. We're really surprised by the results that we got. Not only were we able to train a machine learning model to identify the areas of damage, but also train it to recognize the, whether it was structural or non-structural damage and what the severity level of that damage was. And I looked at Samantha as she was showing me these these photographs with these identifiers on top of them and I said to her, I said this is going to change the world. It's going to change the way we think about structures, evaluate structures, quickly assess them and then maybe more importantly what else can we do mm -hmm. uh, with this technology that might help our industry. One of the areas that we looked at was whether we could read construction. So we developed um, algorithms to take this image and transform it into uh, basically a construction drawing. A tool like this, which can analyze the situation incredibly fast, um, can be really useful to contractors. Uh, they can get the results from that and make adjustments rapidly. Inspections that could be done in San Francisco for projects that are in Shanghai or Mexico City. Mm -hmm. um, done with photography, drone photography or laser scanning. Um, not just re uh, reinforcement or post-tensioning, but also embedments for exterior wall connections, um, non-structural components, things where light boxes might be placed or conduit, we would have a map of the entire structure. So not only to make changes if we need to right away during the process, but we can give our clients um, a map, so to speak, of structural components that may not be visible. We can take now shop drawings or design drawings and then carefully compare to what's on site, um, and in addition to that, monitor structures. The next step going from construction verification is once the building is, is completed, the, the work isn't over. Right? Buildings have a life cycle and there's an operation and maintenance portion of that. So we started training machine learning models to be able to recognize um, signs of, of changes in the building over time, right? whether it's uh, deterioration over time or due to a natural disaster in the case of the damage assessment. This technology, if put in place, could monitor the, even the slowest movements and look for distress in the structure so that we can protect it, um, document it, um, and, and see things that are happening that may lead to more serious problems. We're a business, right? We, we design buildings. We, we, um, we, we have great clients, 
But we think that before the building is even designed, these kinds of efforts are hugely important to us. One of the reasons that I came to work for SOM is because it's a firm that pushes boundaries. We're always at, at the forefront of developing new technologies, new structural systems, new approaches to design. Something like this could improve the way we design and the way we build buildings. And so there's a huge interest in incorporating these techniques into the process. And we're, we're entering into that stage now.